Hello everyone! Before we begin, I want to say there will be some content warning in the form of depression, suicide, and child death. Fuck Nier is dark. Also, spoilers for Nier Replicant and Automata. Got the tissues handy? No, not for that reason, you pervs. Happy birthday to me! I turned 31 this year, and have been playing games for as long as I can remember. But last year was an exceptional time for me to be playing games. I got the Rona and was isolated for two weeks. In that time, I had nothing but games to comfort me. I mean, my wife was there, but she was so out of it, it was basically just me. Plus, she ate the last of the pizza rolls, so tensions were high. Why am I telling you all this? Well, I have a story to set. It was October 4th, and I'd been feeling like crap, so naturally I went to the doctor. I showed the symptoms, so they tested me, and it came back positive. Lucky for me, I had just been paid, so I had someone go get stuff to stock my fridge up, and bought near replicants since I'd heard nothing but amazing things from the game, and had just recently beat Automata. I wanted to share some of my experience with the game, since it was such an experience for me. As I just stated, I had recently beat Automata, and wow, I did not expect the game to hit me so hard in the feels. I wept. I ugly cried hard through various parts of Automata, most notably through Simone's story, and the true ending. It broke me in ways that I didn't know could still be broken. I've suffered with depression for many years now, and as an American with terrible health care, I can't afford the help I need. So what do I do? I drown out my sorrows by spending time with my loved ones and play games. I had heard that Automata was sad, but I wasn't prepared for robots and androids to make me feel this strongly about them. When Pascal opened the door to the children having committed suicide, I audibly gasped and was stunned. I didn't know how to react to something so visceral and unexpected. When presented with the choice of kill him or wipe his memory, I had to really think about what I was doing. On the one hand, killing him was a mercy, even though it would end his life. On the other, wiping his memory and leaving him as a husk feels too cruel. Pascal is such a gentle soul, and yet something so terrible happened to him and his loved ones. Course? They killed themselves. How? How could this happen? Why? Why would they do such a thing? I taught them everything. All my thoughts and emotions. I thought it would serve them well in the future. But instead... How would teaching them lead to something like this? Fear. I don't understand. so they wouldn't rush heedlessly into danger. But instead... Fear destroyed them. It caused them to take their own lives. If I knew this could happen, I never would have... The final ending, with the message of finding hope in hopelessness, also hits me incredibly hard, as I stated in my Everything Great About video. It's a pretty succinct summary of myself, and I often find it difficult to find the brighter side of things, just like I said in my Automata video. That's one reason that I even started this channel. I saw so much negativity around me, and wanted to be someone who promoted the good things in gaming, a medium that is dear to me, and has helped me work through my own issues and problems more times than I could ever count. The ending of Automata, sacrificing your entire being for a stranger, Someone you may even hate is just as beautiful as finding hope in hopelessness. Random acts of kindness and helping others is the best way to be a good person in my eyes, and fighting the end credits with the help of other people is so beautiful and helps give that feeling of connection to others. Everything that lives is designed to end. They are perpetually trapped in a never-ending spiral of life and death. However, 
Life is all about the struggle within this cycle. Did the data salvage restore all of their past memories? Yes. And are those recovered parts of the same design as previous ones? Yes. Then, won't that simply lead us to the same conclusion as before? I cannot deny the possibility. However, the possibility of a different future also exists. A future is not given to you. It is something you must take for yourself. Real talk, I made a small mistake in playing Automata before Replicant. Not that there's anything wrong playing in that order, but the things just don't land the same without some of the context. Like Emil. Emil. The loving soul who would do anything for his friends. Emil, who had unrequited love for Nier. Emil, who had to kill his sister. Emil, who helped regain Nier's lost essence. Emil, who's lived through who knows how many lifetimes and protected the planet over and over to the point he doesn't know which copy of him is the real copy. And part of him just wants everything to end. I knew none of this coming into Automata. I mean, the last one is in the Automata, but without the context behind it, it's not gotten nearly the impact that it deserves. You are you. This pain. This sadness. This desperation. You Even so, all of this is wrong. No matter how hard or how painful, they never gave up. They kept fighting because they believed they could overcome someday. Isn't that right, Kaine? Even if it's pointless, you still have to do it. Because this is the world my friend tried to save. So, finally on to Replicant. The music is one of the first things that stood out to me. Long-time viewers know I adore OSTs that are varied, rather than ones that sound similar all the way through. I cannot get enough of Grandma, the song you hear when fighting Hook for the first time, instead of this big, bombastic fight music that you'd expect. Instead, it's the somber piece leaning into Kaine's feelings of sorrow and regret for not being able to save her grandmother from Hook attacking originally. You've been lonely for so, so long. So much pain, so much despair. Why go on living anymore? Kaine? Is that it? Hmm? Are you finished yet? Don't speak to your grandma like... You're going to stop talking now. And then I'm going to slowly walk over to you. Cram my hand inside your goddamn bitch-ass chest and pull out your fucking heart! Replicant starts off with the original Nier, the catalyst for the journey fighting just to feed him and his starving sister. Or daughter if you're playing Gestalt. From the prologue, you can tell how charged with tragedy this whole story is going to be, with Nier touching the book that will eventually lead him into being the king of the Gestalts, in a manner of speaking, and losing his sister. We need help. Please, somebody, we need help! Help us! Fast forward, and there's another near that looks like the one we just got done seeing hundreds of years ago. Through everything, we're led to believe this Gestalt version of you is the evil one. I mean, he's shadowy looking and all. Surely he's the bad guy, right? Absolutely not. The tragic part of all this is he had the same goal you did cure his sister. The initial journey is framed as we're the hero, but when replaying the game on different routes, we find out the shades we've been killing are actually humans. Real humans. We're only the remnants, the shells, the replicants of them. We grew souls, or humanity, or whatever you want to call it, so these beings can't even return to their bodies. When we kill Shadow Lord, that's it. We've killed humanity. We erase them from existence. He was the only being that was able to produce a specific chemical for returning Gestalt to their bodies. And with him dead, and replicants unable to reproduce, we've doomed the human race. 
The most tragic part of all this is you can visibly see that Nier, our Nier, that we've come to know and love, hesitates for a moment before stealing himself because he feels it's what needs to be done. He doesn't know what he's truly done, only that he saved his sister. You know what's really my favorite part about Nier? It's Kaine. Kaine, the foul-mouthed, half-shade, half-human, intersex lady. I identify with her a lot. I was bullied a lot as a kid, and as a result, I have a hard time making real connections with people. But a few people have shown that they really care about me, and have got me to open up and really trust them. Kaine is the same way. She was bullied and mistreated for being intersex, then, being half-possessed by a shade and trusts no one, she's even self-loathing, same as I am, but Nier comes into her life, then Emil, and they show her that it's okay to trust people and to have friends. They've got her back. She ends up completely overcoming all of herself to be the sword, to be the guardian for Nier. She knows of his pain, too, and refuses to let him go through it alone. Watching her slowly accept her friends is one of the best parts of her character, and he goes more into it in Ending E. Grandma, can I rest now? I'm so tired. Kaine, Kaine over, here. over here! Don't give up! Don't give up. You're stronger, You're than, stronger that. than that! Don't you Don't dare give up now! now. This woman is more trouble than she's worth. That's it. That's it. Come, on. Come on! You're going to live, Kaine! Live? My four? What? <laughs> I had my revenge, and now it's over. Oh, now, see here, this is rich. Vice! We help you in some mad quest for vengeance, and now you think to bid us adieu? How can a fighter so skilled be cursed with such a thick head? A true warrior would fight. They would give all in the service of their friends. Friends? That's right. He's right! Kaine, we're friends now! <laughs> Since beating Replicant, I've gone back and played the original. I thought I liked the downer ending for a while, but giving it some thought, I think ending E, originally found in Grimoire Near, but now beautifully placed in the Replicant version, is the better ending. Is it because you play as Kaine? Most likely. Is it because it has such a huge emotional payoff for her? Even more likely. I love that her final act is to beat Hook again help of Grimoire Vice, and bring back Nier from disappearing into the void. In Ending D, you sacrifice your entire being, not just your life, but every trace of your existence you've ever had on this world. Yona doesn't remember she's had a brother, nobody in the village remembers you, but somehow Kaine has lingering memories, these feelings that she made a promise to someone, someone that she swore she would be by their side. Yona and Emil also have these lingering feelings, but they don't seem to be as strong as Kaine's. She brings back Nier, declaring that he has no right to leave her, that she swore she would be his sword. She, in as many words, tells him how she loves him, and brings him back from non-existence. It's still a very downer ending, as while the world is still doomed to have humanity wiped from everything, there's nothing that can save it, but... She can live the rest of her life with the man she loves, and that's fucking beautiful. The world was horrible and cruel to Kaine, and it's so cathartic seeing her take what she wants to be happy. Shut up, shut up, shut up! I already made up my mind. Nobody tells me what to do. I swore I would be a sword. I swore that I would be your sword. Do you hear me? So I am going to get you back, and I don't care what it takes. Who the fuck do you think you are to just up and disappear like that, huh? I'm the one who gets to decide what my life means to me. 
It's my life, and I'll do whatever I want with it. So quit wasting time like a brainless fuckwit, and get your ass back here now! All of this nonsense I've spouted is barely cracking the surface of what Near Replicant Automata has to offer. If I've not made it super clear, which I'm sure I haven't, I love these games. It says something that after all the games I've played, they stick out as some of the best I've ever had the pleasure of playing. I feel a little regret giving Automata an infinite win, but not Replicant. In my heart it surpasses infinite wins, but the only thing that really hampered that completely perfect status is the complete replay of the second part of the game multiple times. But that's okay. It's perfectly imperfect, and that's truly something to experience for yourself. So please, if you haven't, go do that. I can't ever fully explain why I love Near Replicant. I don't think I'll ever have the words to do it, but it just has stuck with me so much. And it may be because of the time that I was in that I was in somewhat of a susceptible state for it, but it's very possible that it's just a damn good game. That's really all this video is anyway. It's a show for playing the Near games. They give you depression and cure it in the same suite. How can you not want to play them? I can't tell you all the ways that this game has stuck with me, but let me say this. Kingdom Hearts 2 has taken my number one game slot for the last almost two decades, but Near Replicant has pushed it to, to the number three slot. Number one is now reserved for Death Stranding, and I'm gonna have to revisit that one again eventually. Thank you for watching. And don't you dare go Gestalt. Our journey may have been meaningless. Our past may have been a mistake. But... We're not going back. Even if this world comes to an end. Because this... This is the world with the people we cherish.